understand what they say. An hour more. Oh. <laughs> oh jeez <laughs>
ือถ้าจำมือสั้นมือสั้นใช่ไหมกายเนี่ยจะมือใช้กายนี่สนะเราทำแบบไม่เกินกราบเลยง่ายโอ้ยดอลลตะกี้ตัวเลยบานนะเ
for those of you who are visiting, one of San Diego's gets his spectacular view. From off there on a day like today, if you look south, you can see the Coronado Bridge, which is right there, and look to see all the way to Mexico. If you look west and out to the ocean, you're high enough that you actually see the curvature of the Earth the horizon. If you look north, you see the cliffs of Torrey Pines and the Gulf Course. Look east, you see the mountains, and in the wintertime, they have snow in those mountains. But this past week, the show on Mount Soledad has been spectacular. Because right down below Mount Soledad, when you look down, is Marine Corps Base San Diego. And this week, there's Marines from all over the world are here in town. Because they were training on the brand F-35 jets. This is going to be the new attack jet that the Marine Corps has. And I don't live that far from the base, and this week, hear the noise. They make so much noise. And we, I don't think we'll see any jets today because it's Sunday and they take the day off. But just be aware when you go up there. The other thing about going up there is this. Parking is free and there's a nature trail. You can actually hike the nature trail. You can see what the, the native plant life of San Diego looked like hundreds of years ago. And all sorts of other things. They have a beautiful view and contemplation. And if you have a family member who's a veteran, you can get an application, I don't know what the fee is, but you can have a plaque made for them, and they'll be in San Diego overlooking the ocean forever and ever and ever. So it's like I said, one of those places that most people who live here drive by it on the freeway, never know what's there. It takes about 20 minutes to get here from here, just go straight up the freeway on I-5, all the way up Parkway West, and then follow the signs to the top of the mountain. It's a great little place to be. Okay! It's our little tip of the day. Today, by the way, for those of you who don't know, is the Rock and Roll Marathon. The very first Rock and Roll Marathon was in 1998. And the theme of the Rock and Roll Marathon is every mile along the 26 miles. There's a different band. This is our cruise ship terminal, and this is 
where the cruise ships come in. So if you ever take a cruise ship in or out of San Diego, this is where they stop. And sometimes we actually get a third cruise ship and it will stop and they will use the toilet here for that. And again, this is a short walk from Seaport Village. You can walk along the sidewalk right up here to enjoy all those views. Now, the last year we've been doing some filming on the bay. And one of the things that we built is a brand new restaurant. If you look over to the left, you can see that building that has like the geodome in it. That is the port side pier. Four local restaurants got together and built this facility. There's four different restaurants in it. There's also a public access area. You can go in and go upstairs and they have an observation deck that's free. So you can go and take pictures of the bay. But I do warn everybody this. You go up there, the food smells so good, you get hungry, and you may stay for lunch. But that, folks, is the port side pier. And it's all part of our downtown San Diego. And if you look over here on the right-hand side, you'll see some of the staging area for today's Rock and Roll Marathon right there. So we had a Rock and Roll Marathon pad. I don't know what the number is this year, but I think the record was 26,000 runners one year. So it's a pretty big operation. Now this whole area where they have on the right hand side where they have it set up for the marathon, this is called Waterfront Park. Used to be a parking lot. The county put the parking lot. If you go around there and look at it, you'll see all the artwork that was incorporated into the building. And now as we come by, man, we work in the and they walk to work. In the last 20 years, developers have been buying the single family homes that are over 100 years old and putting these mini high rises on them. If you go over to Columbia Street, you can literally walk down the block going south. It's not as big, but we still do it. We just did that last week. Also, one of the events they do is if you're here in town on a Saturday, on Saturday morning, between about 9 o'clock and 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, they close this center of Little Italy down and they do a big thing. Time is of the essence because other people are trying to do the same thing with the drive. Well, the engineers are using slide rules because they didn't have computers then. And they come up to us and say, Chuck, we got a problem. The fuel tanks only have enough gas for 3,500 miles. We can't guarantee that last time. Because what are we going to do? We're going to have a fuel tank. Where are we going to put it? All the space is taken. No problem here. Let's sit on it. And then Mark says, no, I'm not. So they compromise it. If you look at the plane, it's a replica Balboa part of it. And he says, no. Except here in San Diego. The airport over here on the right used to be called Lunch Flats. After his epic flight of the King Lindbergh, the term we still use to this day. Now, folks, I have to give you a warning. You have now entered the activities also. And um, a lot of those activities in military bases all got their start in the 1920s. After MCRD was in the national news. That was because something unique happened. Since before World War II, all women Marines have been trained, and that's Harbor Island. Now, here's the funny thing. Harbor Island's only been around about 70 years. When Juan Cabrillo discovered San Diego all the way back in 1542, the average depth of San Diego Bay was 14 feet. Ships that literally came into the bay in the early days had a jettison in their ballast box to the gables and mountains. So most supplies and everything came by ocean. And as a result, we started to rely on the ocean for food. And that started our fishing industry. Up until 1980, San Diego was the tuna capital of the world. We had several hundred boats in the tuna fleet. We had six tanneries. And literally, you bought tuna fish in the United States back then. It was bought, caught, or processed here in San Diego. Tuna said industry went overseas to slow and strong because of more immigrant groups that lived here in San Diego. The Italians, the Portuguese, the Japanese, and the Chinese. Another interesting history, they were good divers and they were very good at collecting shellfish. The waters off of San Diego and the Pacific Coast were full of the shellfish, abalone. Chinese fishermen started catching them, people started eating them, and suddenly they became a delicacy. Everybody wanted abalone. Well, so many people wanted abalone, we almost fished them to extinction. Right now at most restaurants, if it's on the menu, it's farm raised. Well, the University of California in San Diego Scripps Institute actually raises abalone in aquariums and then releases them into the wild to increase the populations. So abalone is a big deal. Now when I came to San Diego in 1977, I saw 
That's one day's worth of harvesting. Okay? That's how many amyloids they were taken out of the ocean. Now, like I said, they're bringing amyloids back. Now, if you went around San Diego Bay, you saw all those piles of amyloids shelves. What are you doing?